Coming up next, meet Hollywood's Elite on People Now with Bill Tush on Superstation WTBS. It's People Now with Bill Tush. Now, here's Bill. Surprise, the original cast of the show is going to reunite for Still the Beaver. And here he is, the Beaver himself, Jerry Mathers. Proof that he didn't get killed in Vietnam. Greatly exaggerated. Cody and Eddie Point. Haskell is not Alice Cooper. No, actually that was in Rolling Stone, and uh, the Rolling Stone did an article and asked Alice Cooper what kind of a childhood he had. He said, I had a childhood like Eddie Haskell. Is that where they came from? When people read that, they said, oh, Alice Cooper's Eddie Haskell. That's really so. Our, our talent coordinator, Byron, just before we came on, said, why did they call you the Beaver and never just Beaver? I don't know. I guess because I was always in trouble. And, you know, it's like it's like my kids, I say, I don't call them by their first names. It's uh, so-and-so, you know, so the Beaver, you know. <laughs> the Beaver did it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I, gotta, I can't wait to see the show. When is it going to be? It'll be on Saturday night on CBS. Oh. And it'll be a two-hour special with... Basically, all the people you mentioned, uh, Ken Osmond, who plays Eddie Haskell, Lumpy Rutherford, Frank now. Banks, Richard Deacon, who plays Mr. Rutherford. In fact, I go to work for Lumpy and, uh, and uh, his father back at the salt mines, I guess, at, at the old Mayfield salt mines. Barbara Billingsley, uh, of course, Hugh Beaumont passed away, but quite honestly, um, they have a lot of flashbacks in the show with him coming back with all that good, warm advice, and he really steals the show. The show is dedicated to him, but oh, he steals it, I'll tell you. And he was a great nice. man, and it's, it, as I say, I, I feel honored to be in the show with him. Growing up doing that show, and then all of a sudden he gets into re reruns forever. Once in a while, reruns. Yeah, every now and then you'll catch it. And I mean, the show is just like probably bigger now than it ever was. Well, it probably is, and that's because I know I do a lot of appearances at different places, like on the college lecture circuit, and it's really funny. There will be people that come in, and they're like grandparents, and they say, well, I saw you in prime time, and this is my son, and the son or daughter is maybe, you know, in their 30s, and they say, and these are our grandkids or kids, and we watch Leave to Beaver with them now. So basically, we have three generations of people that have in some ways grown up on Leave it to Beaver. I think what is so great is the fact that you are not one of these people that said, oh yeah, I did that character, and I don't want to hear about I don't want to talk about that anymore. Well, I'll you tell still you, have fun with it, and you're doing the new show that's coming back. It's something I'm very proud of, and uh, as an actor, anytime you can be remembered for doing any part, I think it's an honor. I mean, uh, the people that are your fans and the people that remember you, if they come up to me and say, hey, Beave, I say, hi, and I say, what's your name? And we start talking. If I'm in a strange city, I always find out the best restaurants and the good places to go. So basically, I have friends all over the world, and uh, I see no reason to say, no, I didn't do that part or something like that. When you go to a town, say, not as a public appearance, mm -hmm. a personal appearance, so nobody knows you're coming, so you take a trip with the, the family, and you go into a restaurant, do they recognize you? Do people recognize you? Fairly much. Now, in Los Angeles, it's very different, because in Los Angeles, there's so many actors that you go into almost any restaurant, and, nobody you know, there's, there's really, there's four or five people all around, you know. But if I go out of the city, like even like to San Francisco or any place like that, even that's 500 miles from here, it's, uh, but it's a lot of fun. As I say, you make a lot of friends that way. Yeah. When you were doing the show, did you attend a regular school? No, I had a private tutor. I went from, in fact, the first grade up until the eighth grade with a private tutor. And one of the nice things about when the show did end for me was it was my freshman year in high school. So I got to go to high school, and I spent four years there. I got to play football and a lot of different sports. That, that was one of the things I really couldn't do on the set. I was the only kid. It's a very, very good education because you've got a teacher there. She's sitting right above you, and she knows everything you know. I mean, you just can't. A lot of times, you, know, you hide. Like in high school, I learned that trick real quick. When the teacher asks something you don't know, you find a big guy in front of you and just kind of, you know. Yeah, I know. I went through you the went same through thing. You went through that thing. I, I did it, too. Well, the reason why I asked you that question is because I wondered how it was growing up around kids your own age that, that knew you as, as a guy that had his own TV series. It wasn't as if you were, say, the kid that was Dick Van Dyke's son that was third banana on the show or whatever. Well, I'll tell you, you the were truth, the star. But there was a, there was a big <clears> difference <throat> with Leave it to Beaver, and I don't know about the Dick Van Dyke show, but Leave it to Beaver, when it was on prime time, was an adult show. It showed like on Thursday nights at 9 o'clock or Wednesdays at 8.30 or 9. And so most of the kids in my neighborhood never got to see it. So, and the neighborhood I lived in, a lot of the kids like went to different schools, private schools, parochial schools, public schools, and they got home at maybe 3.30 and some of them got home at 4 because they traveled a little 
little farther. I got home at five, and I don't really think most of the kids in my neighborhood realized I was on TV, to be honest with you. I'll be darned. But when did it go into reruns? Was it right after? Right, like, immediately. In fact, as soon as it went off the air in uh, 1963, it started showing like three and four times a day. So there must have been a period where you got to be, say... And let's face it, we were all there, 18, 19 years old, now you got to be cool. And all of a sudden, everybody's saying, well, that's the beaver. Did you go through that? Well, as I say, I just always, you know, face right up to people and say, yeah, and, you know, who are you? And it, it's just the kind of thing that, you know, you can either fight it or you can flow with it. And I just go with the flow. You do a radio show out here now. I uh, do this Jerry Mathers Gathers with rock and roll for the mind, body, and soul. <laughs> Where's you working in a bank a couple years ago? I've been a banker. I was a real estate salesman. Uh, basically, when I got out of college, I had a degree in philosophy from Berkeley, and they really weren't hiring many philosophers at the time. So I decided to go into banking and get some business experience, and then I was in real estate. And uh, I had always kind of hoped that when I was about 30, I would go back into acting. And when I was 29, I started doing dinner theater. And for about the last five years now, four and a half, I've been working full-time as an actor and a radio DJ. Hmm. K-E-Z-Y. Right, but not Yeah, we want to plug the station. Oh, thank you. And also, you and Tony did the uh, the, the dinner theater. Right, we did uh, So Long Stanley, which was an original work by Schiller and Weisskopf. In fact, it was their very first play. They're Norman Lear's head writers now. And about 15 years ago, they wrote the play, and they put it up on the shelf, and then they started writing television, became very, very famous, and no one had ever done the play. So we took it on the road for almost 18 months. It was a lot of fun, but didn't really like being on the road that much. That's... Uh, you just make a lot of good friends in the city after six weeks, and then you go on to the next one. Yeah. You said you have kids. Mm -hmm. I have three kids. Oh. I have an 11-year-old daughter named Tori, and I have a 5-year-old son named Noah, and I have, let's see, she's 10 months now, a daughter named Mercy. Well, do they, uh, except for the 10-month-old, uh, do they see beaver? Actually, if it wasn't for my son, I probably wouldn't see it, but he gets up every morning, and it's on in Los Angeles at 8.30. He gets on and turns it on, and I'm usually either reading the newspaper or drinking a cup of coffee, and uh, he'll be watching it, so... Uh, kind of through osmosis, I guess. I have to watch it. What is that like? I mean, do you remember the shows when you watch them back? I remember the shows. I'll tell you what I remember more. I remember the different people on them. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that there was probably anywhere from two to three hundred people behind the scenes, not even the actors so much, but like the cameramen. Uh, we had one of the directors was David Butler. He did like Captain January oh, with yeah. Shirley Temple and a lot of the on-the-road pictures with uh, uh, Hope and Crosby. And so they'd sit around and tell stories of things that happened doing those different shows. And it was, it was just an incredible experience. It was really a great way to grow up. We're going to take a break, come back and talk more with you. Sounds about, good. About the upcoming show, Still the Beaver, with Jerry Mathers. Don't go away. To be on television again Saturday night in Still the Beaver, which is an updated version. We're going to see you now as Beaver Grown Up with a Family. Sounds good. And uh, Eddie Act Haskell's going to... Almost family. Actually, I'm losing my wife. That's what the whole show's about. Uh, Leave it to Beaver was always a very contemporary show. Uh, we had shows that dealt with alcoholism, divorce, and in this show, I'm getting a divorce, and it's the relationships between me and my two sons, Corey and Oliver, who are about, oh, maybe seven and maybe nine or ten, and uh, the way we relate and with the rest of the Cleaver family. So you were living, uh, according to the script, what, in the big city? Somewhere? In the big city, and uh, I was working for my father-in-law. I had a company car and a company house, and my wife decides to become a veterinarian. And uh, to be a veterinarian, she has to go to Italy, so she says goodbye. And there goes the company car. <laughs> there goes everything car. except the two kids. And uh, so I want to go back to bake the basics of Mayfield, and I go back there to uh, kind of get my life together. And then Tony Dow, who plays Wally, is a very, very well-to-do attorney. And he's so well-to-do that he decides to get his house redone, just a little remodeling. And he hires Eddie Haskell Construction to come in and remodel it. <laughs> Biggest mistake he ever made because they tear out walls, they burn the place down. And, and he so tries he, to explain why they did that. Right. He, well, he's chasing Eddie going, I want my house back, you know. So he has to move in with, uh, with, with Mrs. Cleaver, June Cleaver, a mom, what else can I say? And uh, it's just kind of the relationships that, uh, that happened between a family in the 80s. So it's going to be a thing for all of us that still enjoy Leave it to Beaver and reruns. can look at it now and just, it's like escapism, but it still deals with something. That it is, and the, the nice part about it is the two writers, Nick Abdo and Brian Levant, actually Nick Abdo is one of the producers, but he did help with some of the writing, have been Leave it to Beaver fans since they were nine years old. Now right now they're uh, like 
like the executive producer and the writers for Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley, but they understood all the characters, like the way Eddie Haskell relates to Mrs. Cleaver or to Beaver or to Wally and Lumpy, the way they, all the characters interact. And there was a very certain way that those characters acted and reacted, and they caught all the flavor of that in the show. What was it like getting back together with everybody and doing it again? Well, you know, people say, well, wasn't it, you know, like you've never seen him. You know, we see each other probably once every at least couple of months, and we always keep in touch. We all know what's happening to the other people on the show. So it was nice, but it wasn't like it was like a 20-year reunion where you'd never seen the people before. Now, one person, uh, Robert Stevens, who plays uh, Larry Mondello, I hadn't seen in about 23 years because the last year of the show, his parents, or his father actually, had moved to Philadelphia, and they took him off the show because of a, a company move, and we just lost track. So I hadn't seen him in 23 years, and I just, I looked at him, and he said, you know, of course, he's got red hair, and now he's got a big red beard, but he's still Larry Mondello. Yeah, but what does he do? Actually, he's an insurance salesman, I believe, in Atlantic City. That's crazy. You know, it must be nuts for a lot of these people that have gotten out of it, which a few have. Well, Eddie Haskell is actually a policeman. He's right? a policeman. He's been a policeman for almost seven years. About, oh, about eight months ago, he was shot three times. He had a bulletproof vest on, so it, it did save him, but uh, he loves his work. I mean, he to do the show, he traded shifts with other officers and took vacation time, and he, he really wanted to do the show, but as soon as it was over, he went right back to his work. And, I'll be darned. And with Larry, the guy from Philadelphia. Right. The same thing with him. He, they flew him in. He stayed here. I believe he worked about a week and a half, and then he went back and he sold insurance. And uh, well, Frank Bank, who plays Lumpy Rutherford, always you know it's Dumpy Lumpy. Dumpy Lumpy is one of the top. Uh, Frank stock. Bank is his real name. Frank Bank's his real Frank name. Frank Bank plays Dumpy Lumpy. Right, and he's a, one of the top <laughs> stockbrokers or bond dealers here in Los Angeles. But you know he's got a real nice guy. Got a great sense of humor. He's got a DeLorean, and on the back of it, the customized California license plate says, "I'm Lumpy." <laughs> <laughs> that, because you hear so many stories about shows that end and nobody sees each other. I think they did it with Star Trek, like uh, Leonard Nimoy never saw William Shatner for 10 years, and yet they all work together. Well, I think the thing about Leave it to Beaver, and I think it really comes across, is that we were all good friends. We were all, we all liked each other. We weren't really a family. People say, well, do you think that Tony Dow is your brother, or that uh, you know Barbara Billingsley or Hugh Beaumont, did you have relationships with them like parents? No, but we were all good friends, and I think that comes across. There's just there's a warm feeling between all of us, and we're all really good friends. And of course, I've known them practically all my life. Did you see Barbara I mean, Billingsley? That's a big switch to go from the, the mother of Leave It to Beaver to talk and jive talk to an axe murderer. I see the axe murderer. So I can't imagine her being an axe murderer. Well, she was sitting in a jail cell, and that's what she said she did. <laughs> <laughs> you all got back together at the original Cleaver house, actually, didn't you? We certainly did. In fact. They were. They got all the old props. Universal MCA that uh, owns the show had a lot of the same furniture in like one of their warehouses, and they were looking all over for the house. And it was built like in about 1935 for a Cary Grant movie, and it's been used all the time. And they were looking around for it, and they said, you know, where is it? Well, Marcus Welby was using it, and they put another front on it. They ripped off the I guess plaster of Paris, and there was the Leave to Beaver house. Isn't that something? You know where you see it all the time now on the Rockford Files. When, now, you know, I know you're going to say Jim Rockford lives in a trailer, right? right? But every time he goes over to Lieutenant Becker's house and has, like, a, a barbecue in the backyard, that's the back of the Leave to Beaver that's house. That's the Beaver house. But you see it all the time. I mean, as I say, I know it. I'll, I'll be watching this show and I'll say, oh, there it is. <laughs> is there a chance for a series? It's possible. As I say, we made this as a two-hour movie, and it's, uh, it's a very, very good two-hour movie. It could probably stand by itself without the characters from Leave it to Beaver. They just enhance it. Uh, working full-time as an actor, I'd love to do a series. Some of the other people, it may be a little hard to get. As I say, Frank Banks, uh, Ken Osmond, who's a police officer, uh, Robert Stevens, who lives in Atlantic City and sells insurance. Some of those people, it may be a little tougher to, uh, to get back to do a series. But there's always a possibility. You said that Beaver back when the original days mm -hmm. when it was on network was a adult show it actually was time. it was and then, and then you look at what's on the lineup today the adult lineup your dallas's and dynasties and things like that and everything is lust and sex and well of course those two go together and whatever else they can come up with do you think beaver would have it today may be able to make it today we'll see on saturday it's a good point that's a good point. As I say, it's a very good show, and I, I think it really could. You know, when Leave to Beaver was on prime time, we dealt with issues. There was a show on alcoholism where Beaver finds the painter that his father's hired knowing he's an alcoholic, and the painter says, uh, could you go in and get me a drink? And Beaver comes back with water, and the guy says, no, I mean something with a little more kick, and he gets drunk, and Ward has to explain to him about alcoholism. We had a show on divorce where um, Beaver had a friend that came over, and he had like three moms and four dads, and his, his parents were getting divorced then, and he went with his father, 
he got a pony. If he went with the mother, he got a train set. And Beaver went to Ward and said, you know, why don't you in June get divorced? Because then I could get all these great gifts at Christmas and my birthday. And Ward, in his infinite wisdom, took me into the den and said, but would you want to split up our happy home? So there were shows like that. I mean, we were dealing with, at that time, very uh, controversial issues. Now, of course, today, it's a whole different ballgame what's on TV. Well, Saturday night we're going to go back to the old-fashioned values. Hopefully. As I say, we'll, and we'll have a few surprises for you, too. Do you wear the cap? I certainly do. That's my green baseball cap. I wouldn't be hard, hardly anywhere without it. If it was outdoors, I'd have it on. <laughs> okay.